Hi, I'm Carol Ann Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and this is week six, day two. If you want more of an introduction to uh, the exercises for this week, you can refer to um, day one. I'll just briefly go over what is happening um, this week. The title is Forgiven and Loved. And the quote from Ignatius is, He who goes about to reform the world must begin with himself, or he loses his labor. So we looked at the rebellion of mankind, or humankind in general, last week. So now we're looking at our own personal rebellion. And actually, I had... We're, the grace that we're praying for, I simplified it because I didn't, you know, as I prayed it out loud in the video yesterday, I thought, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. So we're seeking the grace to know our sin so that we might know the depths of God's love for us personally. So with that, it's just that bubble wrap of God's love. And this quote by um, another Jesuit, we are not as good as we thought, but we are much more loved than we ever imagined. So just to look at our own personal rebellion, look at our own personal sin in light of God's love. And that's why I started um, with Psalm 130. And I'm just going to read Psalm 130 again. We're not going to do a Lexio Divina on it, but I wanted to read it because this that's this is the mindset that we we want to have out of the depths i have cried to you o lord lord hear my voice let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications if you lord should mark iniquities o lord who could stand but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared i wait for the lord my soul does wait and in his word do i hope my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, indeed more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. So just there's abundant loving kindness. And Psalm 130 is great in the Passion. That's what I did yesterday. I did it in the Passion. So if you want to do it again, do it again. So today we're looking at Isaiah. And um, Isaiah 54, 1 through 17. So it's a little longer um, than yesterday. But we'll just do uh, Alexio Divina in that. Um, so I'm going to just do it in the New American Standard, and I may venture out in the last reading and do it in another version. But I invite you to close your eyes. Collecting all your thoughts, all your burdens and giving them over to the Lord one by one. Casting your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. I'll give you a few, few moments to do that. And as you fix your gaze on God, remember that he's fixing his gaze on you and looking upon you with love. So receive God's loving gaze. We pray that more of our day 
would be directed to your service and praise. And we seek the grace to know our sin so that we might know the depth of your love for us personally. Thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love and you've drawn us with loving kindness. So I'll read Isaiah 54, 1 through 17. Shout for joy, O barren one, you who have borne no child. Break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you have not travailed. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess nations and will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be put to shame, and do not feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced. But you will forget the shame of your youth, and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your husband is your maker, whose name is the Lord of hosts, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, even like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In an outburst of anger I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting loving kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the days of Noah to me, when I swore that the waters of Noah would not flood the earth again. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor will I rebuke you. For the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you, and my covenant of peace will not be shaken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony, and your foundations I will lay in sapphires. Moreover, I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of crystal and your entire wall of precious stones. All your sons will be taught of the Lord and the well-being of your sons will be great. In righteousness, you will be established. You will be far from oppression for you will not fear and from terror for it will not come near you. It, anyone fiercely assails you, it will not be from me. Whoever assails you will fall because of you. Behold, I myself have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and brings out a weapon for its work. And I have created the destroyer to ruin. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. So just sit with that reading for a few moments. And I'll read it a second time and 
ask God to highlight a word or phrase. It's a lot of words. A lot of times with Lexio Divina, we don't do this long of a passage. So I just encourage you to, um, <clears throat> to just allow God, just trust God that he'll bring something to mind. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is what I get for doing this early in the morning. Oh. <clears throat> Isaiah 54, 1 through 17, looking for a word or phrase that shimmers. Shout for joy, O barren one, you who have borne no child. Break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you who have not travailed. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. And your descendants will possess nations and will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced. But you will forget the shame of your youth, and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your husband is your maker, whose name is the Lord of hosts. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you. Like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, even like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In an outburst of anger I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting loving kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the days of Noah to me, when I swore that the waters of Noah would not flood the earth again. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor will I rebuke you. For the mountains may be removed, and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you, and my covenant of peace will not be shaken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Afflicted, afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony, and your foundations I will lay in sapphires. Moreover, I will make your battlements of rubies, and your gates of crystal, and your entire wall of precious stones. All your sons will be taught of the Lord, and the well-being of your sons will be great. In righteousness you will be established. You will be far from oppression, for you will not fear, and from terror, for it will not come near you. If anyone fiercely assails you, it will not be from me. Whoever assails you will fall because of you. Behold, I myself have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and brings out a weapon for its work, and I have created the destroyer to ruin. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. So I invite you to reflect upon that word or phrase that God highlighted. And if you need to stop the video and look at the words in your own Bible, that was a lot of words for me to read. Just stop it and just continue to ask God if he hasn't already give you a word or a phrase. And when he does, mull it over in your mind, chew on it.
and then I'm not going to read it again, but this is because it's long, but with that word or phrase, now respond to God in prayer. Just talking, you reflected upon it. Now talk to God about it. So I'll give you, um, and remember that um, responding to God means talking to him and then listening to what he has to say, what he wants to teach you from that word or phrase. with that, I'm going to do um, this. What we've been doing is contemplating our own sin. And yesterday we contemplated maybe any sins from our childhood. Um, but this is Ignatius, and I'll just reread um, what Ignatian, Ignatius wrote. And this is um, Spiritual Exercises, Numbers 55 to 64. Ignatius wants us to feel sin with our hearts so we can fall in love with the right things. Remember, he is a prodigal God, full of grace and mercy. So um, with that, just look back over your blessed history and invite God to lovingly and gently lead you through your life again. So yesterday we did childhood. So today we're looking at youth. And the reason why this passage was chosen is because it says, fear not for, this is verse 4 from 54, Isaiah 54, fear not for you will not be put to shame and do not feel humiliated for you will not be disgraced, but you will forget the shame of your youth. So that's the main thing um, uh, to just look at our youth. Um, and it might be something from your youth that you've totally resolved with God, but um, just ask him if there's anything from your history in your youth. And when I'm saying youth, I'm going to go a little bit into young adulthood. So like maybe from junior high, 12, 13, <laughs> that's when we make a lot of our mistakes. Um, uh, junior high and high school is when I made most of my mistakes. Um, at middle school, like 12, 13 years old to maybe 25, just that whole, um, uh, or like, I'd say youth, even though you're an adult at 18, just junior high, 12 to 22, let's say that, 10 years. <laughs> I'm making this up. Um, but just looking at youth and into your young adulthood. God, what do you want? Um, just looking at our history, what do you want us to know? What's a memory you want to give us? And with that memory, God, what do you want to impress upon our heart from that memory?
So I'm going to read the passage for the last time. It's particularly emphasizing forgetting the shame of our youth. Shout for joy, O barren one, you who have borne no child. <clears throat> Break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you have not travailed. <clears throat> for the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess nations and will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not. For you will not be put to shame and do not feel humiliated for you will not be disgraced but you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more for your husband is your maker whose name is the Lord of hosts and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel who is called the God of all the earth for the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, even like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In an outburst of anger I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting loving kindness I will have compassion on you says the Lord your Redeemer for this is like the days of Noah to me when I swore that the waters of Noah would not flood the earth again so I've sworn that I will not be angry with you nor will I rebuke you for the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake but my loving kindness will not be removed from you and my covenant of peace will not be shaken says the Lord who has compassion on you O afflicted one storm tossed and not comforted behold I will set your stones in antimony and your foundations I will lay in sapphires Moreover, I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of crystal and your entire wall of precious stones. All your sons will be taught of the Lord and the well-being of your sons will be great. In righteousness, you will be established. You will be far from oppression, for you will not fear, and from terror, for it will not come near you. If anyone fiercely assails you, it will not be from me. Whoever assails you will fall because of you. Behold, I myself have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and brings out a weapon for its work. And I have created the destroyer to ruin. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Let's spend a couple of moments in silence before the Lord.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Again, we can forget the shame of our youth. And this is a lot about the loving kindness of the Lord. Soak in this compassion and loving kindness. The mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you and my covenant of peace. We have peace. With, when we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I was brought to a memory just now. This is all in real time. Um, uh, 17, 18 years old. Um, so I'm doing that. I can forget the shame of 17 going on 18. And um, a moral relationship. And, and uh, but I do remember meditating and it took me a while to get over that, the shame of it, and just meditating in this passage. And fast forward that 17, 18, and 22, which is the range I gave, is how God spoke to me from this passage in Isaiah when I was living in Spain. And uh, just the promises he gave for my life. I was single. I was single till I was 31, and, but I was okay with um, uh, forgetting the shame of my youth and also that knowing that my husband is my maker, whose name is the Lord of hosts. And then a promise for all your sons will be taught of the Lord and the well-being of your sons will be great. And I thought, well, maybe it's spiritual children, but I did end up having two sons <laughs> and they're adults now and they're okay. <laughs> The well, their well-being is great. We just went for a hike yesterday with our two sons. So um, just be encouraged. Continue to mull this over in your mind. I kind of did Alexio and the meditation on your, um, your history. Um, so be blessed and don't forget conversing with God, going to another place or go for a walk. And then the examine at another time of the day. Bye.